What, what have you found out about uh, the guys that uh, wear the JU green these days? Well, you know, it's an interesting mix. We have, we have uh, 46 returners, um, and we have, you know, roughly 54 newcomers. So we have a, a great blend of experience with the veterans returning, and then we have another half the team that's newcomers. And that's been uh, the challenge for training camp, quite frankly, is to, to get our group to bond. That's goal one, to become a, a true football family, a brotherhood of sorts, mm -hmm. and play together as one with all these uh, strangers that hopefully after practice of what to 15 today we're not strangers anymore <laughs> exactly what what's the culture what i mean uh, the culture these days of a college football player who wants to come to ju and play what what kind of culture is he expecting when he shows up on campus well you know, hopefully you're, you know, you want guys that are that are serious about getting that quality education mm -hmm. we have a first class education to start with here at, at jacksonville university second one guy that's passionate about the game a guy that loves to play football mm -hmm. and uh Hopefully well, that's what people will see when they come out here to a game this fall here on Milne Field is they'll see a bunch of guys in green flying around that love to play football. Isn't that a, a, a thing that most people who aren't as closely associated to the sport as you are maybe sometimes don't quite get that there are guys that play don't, don't love the game, but when you find a guy who can play and loves the game, that makes him a special kind of player. No question, and, and hopefully that's the culture we create with those guys on the fence where that tipping point is. We get more guys into that love to the play than the guys that like to play and they're playing for uh, maybe some other reasons. Uh, maybe their dad wanted to be a player or their girlfriend likes it that they're on the football team or whatever. We want guys that truly love to play and it doesn't matter what day of the week it is, whether scoreboard lights are on or off, they just love to play football and, and, and put on their helmet and put, on their, put in their mouthpiece and go to work. Uh, speaking of kind of a, a, a culture, when we see you on the practice field, you've got the camo hat, you, 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 have the, you have the look of a kind of a drill sergeant type. If I ask the players, is that what they would say? Well, I don't know. I mean, we probably, I got to keep this ball don't protect us. <laughs> I mean, part of us is pragmatics of it, right? Right. But, you know, we run an up-tempo, structured, disciplined practice, but I think our players are having fun. Mm -hmm. I think they're playing, they're, fl they're flying around. If you come to our practice, you don't see a lot of hands in your pockets. You don't hmm. see, you don't see guys standing around. You see coaches flying around. You see players flying around. Um, we're an up-tempo attack offense, okay? We're a swarm defense, and that starts, that practice environment has to reflect that. The practice environment should reflect how you aspire to play on Saturday. So that's that's what that's our that's our mission. And it's it's hard when it's August what, yeah, twenty third, sure. and it's a hundred degrees out here, and you know, <laughs> you know, and there's no one in the stands. Yeah, but, but you find out who loves the game. You find out who loves the game, and you you find out um, who has persistence, who's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of separates the pretenders from the contenders. There's a mental toughness that obviously comes with the game, particularly when it's a training camp. You're allowed, you were telling me, 28 practices, and there's no kind of carrot at the end every week where you're going to get to play in a game. Well, there's no question. It, it, training camp, everyone in the country, I mean, it doesn't make us special. Every football team in the country is going through training camp. So what's going to separate you from the others? Well, how hard you work, how well you do it, the details, the fundamentals associated by position, um, all that hopefully ends up culminating into a productive fall, you mm -hmm. know, every Saturday afternoon. And we, and we tell our players, hey, every day you step out here inside the lines, every day is a job interview. Mm -hmm. Every day is a job interview. Because when they get out of here at JU and they get this world-class degree from JU, they're going to go out and they're going to find, they're, whether they're working for Google or Coca-Cola or, or the U.S. Army or wherever they're going to work for, every day is a job interview. You know, and the sooner or later they learn that, the better. Obviously, when we see and Ian Shields coach team they're going to be they're going to be tough they're going to be disciplined um, you're going to run the triple option on offense where is that right well yeah, without without giving too much away <laughs> I mean that's what a quarter of a century of my work would point to <laughs> um, but you know wherever we've been we've been committed to the running game and that's right. different now that being said I think we have some explosive playmakers here at JU that we have inherited and uh, we got a true I think in Ryland Wells we have a real dual threat quarterback uh, and I think we have a, a, some experienced guys at the skill positions that, that can really make plays in space. So that's exciting. Um, but I think above all, the all of scheme is, you know, if, if aliens were beamed down and they're looking down, they're going to watch a JU football team. I'm hoping they see guys that are flying around and playing with perfect effort. From when the ball snap to the echo of the whistle, all right, if that play lasts six seconds and there's 70 plays in a football game, there are 420 of those seconds or seven minutes, the, the Dolphins are flying around. 
Bobby Bowden's the first one who told me about the echo of the whistle, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> the I think you had a pretty good idea how to work football games. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but you told me the day that you were introduced, we sat down and talked, and you said the triple option is the greatest offense ever invented. The greatest play, the greatest single play right. that's ever invented is a triple option. Because okay. the offense always has a child class. Mm -hmm. You're always plus one. You always there's have no the way, last decision. There's, right. no, there's no way the play can be defended if executed properly, mm -hmm. okay? given equal genetic talent. Okay. Right? But it comes down to execution and discipline and, thought of, and being right. That's why you see the service academies running it, mm -hmm. right? because for the only way for them to match up at the Division One level playing Notre Dame and Stanford and Rutgers or whoever okay, is to out-execute them. And that's the office where you can out-execute them. You don't have to out-maul them. Mm -hmm. okay? And that's... And, and that's uh, that's the kind of player you have to get here that understands the game, loves the game, thinks the game as well. Certainly. I mean, certainly our goal, one of our keys to victory is win the mental game. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot can go with that, obviously. But we have to ex out-execute people. Now, that being said, we have some explosive players here. We have some guys with real talent here. I mean, we had, we've had three NFL scouts here in the last two days. we got some guys that can play. Hmm. So that's encouraging. What are you going to do um, for the rest of the summer till till day one of uh, the – I mean, just continue to hone it, continue to work on it? We are. I mean, it, you know, it's a repetition-based system offensively and certainly defensively as well. I think you know, no one ever talks about the defense, you know. <laughs> right. we're, we're fortunate here, you know, with Rich Ellerson as our defensive coordinator. You know, Rich has been a Division One head coach at Army, was the first head coach there to win a bowl game in over a quarter of a century, was a defensive coordinator at Arizona in the famed Desert Swarm days mm -hmm. with Teddy Bruschi and Chris McAllister. I mean, the best – when they beat Miami in the Fiesta Bowl, what, 41-7 to seven or something like that, you've got one of the best defenses in the history of college football, the Desert Swarm. And so we got Rich Ellison here as our defensive coordinator, so we're blessed to have him here. And Greg Newhouse is coaching our safeties. Greg was a defensive coordinator at Oregon State for about 15 years for Dennis Erickson, uh, Mike Riley. And, and so we have this wealth of experience um, defensively, and so I think that's going to bode well for us, and our style of play is going to be unique defensively as well. You've recruited for, for Jacksonville University and um – but you've been here in Jacksonville proper for a, for a little bit, not not quite a year. Right. What, what have you found out? What, do you, what, do you, what what's the city what's the city like to somebody who just moves here? Well, I, I'm still learning it. Right. You know, I'm still learning it. I, you know, I've lived in a lot, a lot of different parts of the country. This first time in Florida, and I, I I tell you what, it's nice to bring a recruit. I'm just talking from a football angle. It's mm -hmm. nice to bring a recruit into Jacksonville, Florida. Say, oh yeah, we got this world-class education. This private school right here on the river. Oh yeah, look across the river and you see an NFL stadium, right? Or you can drive to the beach about 10 minutes, and you know you got palm trees and beaches. That's not hard to sell to an 18-year-old now, <laughs> all right? Now, especially on the right afternoon. Right. You know, we got a special place here. I think we don't have to be the best-kept secret in in Arlington, mm -hmm. you know, we have, we, have, we have a remarkable product that I think translates regionally, certainly, and potentially nationally. Um, we can be a real player at the FCS level. Yeah, but what have you found out personally? I mean, I, fa I found out when I came to town, Jacksonville is an interesting place because most people aren't actually from here, so they move here. Right. So many people move here and stay here, change jobs, stay in no town. Question. No question. And um, it's one of those places, unlike a lot of other places, where if you come to town, you do your job, you get involved in a charity, you stay out of trouble, you're accepted as part of, no of the fabric of what's going on. Have, have you found that kind of welcoming culture as well? Oh, I have. I have. It's, you know, I was coming from North Carolina where it, it, it's really the South. It's somewhat provincial. Yes. I lived in South Carolina. Yes, and it's, sir. You know, a great place, wonderful people, but certainly a, a more provincial than Jacksonville. No question. I mean, I'm not sure I ever established a secret handshake. <laughs> exactly. Right? And you get to Jacksonville, <laughs> and, and it, it does feel like home. And I have you know, my wife and I have three boys. They're plugged in to, to the community. They're, they're playing travel baseball. They're playing football. Well, not my three-year-old. He's a little young. Yeah, we're getting, he's getting closer. Right. All right. But um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been great, frankly. The transition has been great. Um, I'm sorry, no complaints. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, and again, it wasn't hard to say, hey, uh, honey, we're moving to Jacksonville, Florida, and, you know, there's a nice beach and uh, the climate. You can't get, I mean, it might be a little hot right now, right, in August, right. but we're dealing with it. Snows in Chicago in the winter. Uh, I say it beats the West Point <laughs> in the Hudson. <laughs>